Hi, my name is Daniel Rodriguez, and today I will show you how to build games and interactive applications for the living room using Google Cast and the Game Manager APIs. There are millions of Cast devices ready for your amazing games. The Cast model introduces a new exciting game experience. Players can use their phones as dynamic game controllers with the TV. There is a lot of opportunity for innovation here. Mobile devices have powerful sensors and touch screens that we can use to our advantage. Just imagine advancing through a dungeon with your friends, using your phone screen to draw arcane symbols to cast spells, while your body physically runs around the living room to cast a protective shield around you. In order to build that kind of experience, all the devices need to share information. Thankfully, you won't have to spend your time writing and testing code to synchronize them. The Game Manager API helps you with this, particularly in the case where the cast device is responsible for rendering on the TV and hosting the majority of the game logic. Getting your game ready for Google Cast means understanding three parts of the Game Manager API. First, we have the senders. These are the player's mobile phones, tablets, or laptops. Android, iOS, and Chrome are all supported. Next, we have the cast receiver. That's a TV connected with a cast device, like a Chromecast. Finally, there is information exchanged between the senders and the receiver. There are a bunch of different game types that can take advantage of the Game Manager API, from turn-based to real-time gameplay which is why we support the ability to have multiple players on a single sender device. And all of these APIs can be used in combination with Google Play Game Services to implement features like leaderboards and achievements. So here's how it works. All the synchronization between players is handled through the cast receiver. You know, like a Chromecast connected to your TV. This acts like a server for the match and will store the game state, and will take the role of pushing notifications to devices once new information is available. Players can make requests to change their state and send game messages to the receiver. Player state can be used to implement features like a lobby system. It is also used to indicate that a player has been disconnected and to reconnect that player. Let's look at the APIs for our sender devices. The sender APIs are available on Android, iOS, and Chrome, and work the same across platforms. All request operations performed by the sender device are asynchronous. To connect the sender and register a player, first, you must initialize the cast SDK. Check out our dev site to get more information. Once this is done, you'll be ready to request a Game Manager client instance. It contains a copy of the entire state on the receiver device and will be updated automatically. From this point on, you can read the current state, send game messages, and make player requests. A player request is a message used to register new players and change their player state. A game message represents players' actions. Its contents are entirely up to your game. The Game Manager client always has a snapshot of the receiver state, and it's updated automatically. This means you can query any value at any time, like the number of players or the lobby state. You can attach a listener to get notified when something changes or when a game message is received. Now let's look at the receiver APIs for the HTML5 get game running on the Google Cast device. This is my favorite part, since this is where the majority of the game code lives. To get started, follow instructions on our dev site about how to set up a receiver and then construct a Game Manager object. Unlike the sender APIs, all operations you perform are synchronous since everything happens on the same device. When you update any piece of Game Manager state, a message will be sent automatically to all connected senders, letting them know of the change. Much like on the sender APIs, you can set up listeners to get notified of state changes and game messages. To send game messages to players, you just have to specify the player ID and the message. We'll take care of the rest. But uh, we can't write perfect code every time, right? To debug your game, you can connect the Chrome Remote Debugger, just like with any other cast application. You can enable a debug UI that is displayed on top of your game on the TV screen. We also provide you with a debugging app for Android and iOS that allows you to see the game state and messages being passed around, as well as connect new players and update them. To help you get started, we have open source game samples that you can use for reference. Make sure to check them out. In summary, we provide you with the receiver SDK, the sender SDKs for Android, iOS, and Chrome, sample games that help you get started, game debugger apps and a debug UI for the receiver, UX guidelines for cast games, and all of the SDK documentation and reference. There are other ways you can use to create games the power of Google Cast. If you want to have a phone or a tablet host the game logic and push content to a TV, Check out the DevBite video about remote display for Google Cast. We're excited to see what kind of innovative games you'll build using the Game Manager APIs for Google Cast. Don't forget to check our dev site to get more information. See you soon.